Ethanol, or what we typically call alcohol, is produced in drinks by fermentation. However, there are slight differences in the way different alcoholic beverages are made. Thanks to the generosity of the Broken Beaker Distillery in Indianapolis, this video will explore the chemistry behind distilled beverages. Glucose is a carbohydrate that is used as energy in the majority of living organisms. But the way that different organisms break down that glucose differs. When brewer's yeast consumes glucose, it produces ethanol as a byproduct of a process called fermentation. So, producing alcoholic beverages should be pretty easy. Take glucose, give it to yeast, and boom, drinks for everybody. However, the plant matter used as glucose sources for yeast has most of its glucose locked up in a storage form called starch. Thus, the distillers at the Broken Beaker use two enzymes called alpha and beta amylase to break down that starch into usable glucose. But there's another problem. Yeast cannot survive in a liquid of more than 20% ethanol. Distillation is therefore used to reach the higher alcohol content found in distilled drinks. When a mixture of two liquids boils, the vapor phase contains a higher fraction of the compound with the lower boiling point than the liquid phase contains. In the case of water and ethanol, ethanol has a lower boiling point. If this concentrated ethanol vapor is then collected as a liquid and boiled again, the new vapor mixture will have an even higher fraction of ethanol. As the fraction of ethanol in the mixture increases, the boiling point of the mixture decreases. Distillers use these principles to increase the ethanol content of their drinks. As the fermented mash of ethanol, water, and other impurities is boiled, a vapor containing a higher fraction of ethanol than the mash contains rises in the column. Eventually, the vapor reaches a point in the column that is cool enough for it to condense back into a liquid, which is caught on a condenser plate. Further hot vapor rising in the column will cause the collected liquid to boil again, causing it to have an even higher fraction of ethanol. This process continues until vapor with a high enough fraction of ethanol, and therefore a low enough boiling point, to reach the top of the column is formed. This vapor then makes its way to a condenser tube, where it is cooled back into a liquid and collected. The first 5-10% of the collected liquid, called the heads, is made up of the many volatile impurities that were produced in the mash. The bulk of the collected liquid, called the hearts, contains the distilled ethanol. The last portion of the liquid is called the tails and contains a relatively low amount of ethanol. One of the striking features of the distillation equipment is the many segments made of copper. This metal helps to remove foul-tasting sulfur compounds from drinks by forming copper sulfate, which is not very soluble in ethanol. As much as creating these drinks is a science, it is also an art form. If you are at all interested in learning more, head on down to the Broken Beaker Distillery, where they would love to teach you more. As usual, feel free to comment below, and if you want more science, be sure to subscribe to Everyday Elements on YouTube.